In this short Learn Electrics video, we'll look at three phase motor rating plates. It's complementary to our other videos on electric motors, which include three phase, single phase, star delta starters, etc. If you want to learn and understand how to use and install electric motors, check out the videos. A three phase motor rating plate or name plate gives important information about the motor's operating parameters, its performance and other specifications. The information given on the nameplate will enable proper installation of the motor and ensure the correct performance in use. Manufacturers will have their preferred information to be included, but all will show key details such as the number of phases, the rated voltage for star or delta operation, frequency of supply, power rating and RPM to name just a few. So what will the nameplate tell us? Quite a lot in fact. The actual information may vary slightly between manufacturers, but there will always be the essential data for safety and correct functioning. In this video, I've made up my own nameplate for the purposes of teaching, and most motor rating plates will contain at least this information. There will be information about the motor generally. This will include the manufacturer of the motor and often the country of manufacture. There will be an order number, a build specification. Back at the manufacturer's office, this order number will tell the manufacturer all about the motor, the components used to build it, the windings, the bearings and so on. If spare parts are needed for the motor, then quoting this order number should ensure that you receive the correct items. There will also be a serial number which is unique to that motor. And a conformity mark should be on the label too, indicating to what standard the motor was built to. In the UK, CE marking indicates that a product meets EU safety, health and environmental requirements. The product can be traded within the European economic area, including Great Britain. Since Brexit, the UK CA marking is the primary conformity marking for products placed on the Great Britain markets. The frame number will give details of physical height of the shaft, hole spacings in the footplate, etc. This will enable replacement motors to be sourced with the same mounting dimensions. Bearing information is important. DE is the drive end of the motor, where the shaft is connected to the driven equipment. NDE indicates the non-drive end of the motor, usually where the cooling fan is situated. It is important to relubricate the bearings after set intervals, and this can be displayed too, so that these important service intervals are not missed. Dry bearings will soon lead to a failed motor. Some nameplates will also provide details of the type of grease to use and the quantity required for each bearing, and a standard reference number for the type of bearing, which is sometimes different between the drive end and the non-drive end. What type of motor is it? 3P here indicates three phase, and it is an induction motor. Induction motors are historically known as squirrel cage motors because the type of construction resembles the cages used to keep squirrels as pets in Victorian times. The motor RPM is important to know. The nameplate will show the rotational speed of the shaft at the rated load in revolutions per minute. The 1000 RPM motor shown here will only achieve about 900 and 90 RPM. But how do we get 990 RPM? It's a 50 Hz supply, that's 50 cycles per second with 60 seconds in a minute. The motor will have a certain number of poles and the rotor will move around the red, yellow and blue windings or the UV and W windings at a rate dependent on the number of poles. To find the calculated RPM Multiply 50 cycles a second by 60 seconds in a minute. This will give 3000. Now divide 3000 by half the number of poles. 
In our example for a six pole motor, this is three. 3000 divided by three is 1000 RPM, calculated. But an induction motor will not achieve the calculated RPM. It will always lag behind. I always imagine it as the rotor always chasing the electrical current, like dogs chasing the hare at the races. They never quite catch it. So we have, in this example, 990 RPM. Cos phi, or power factor, is a measure of the phase difference between voltage and current at the motor, a measure of the losses. Voltage and current will not peak at the same time in an inductive motor. A fact of life when you have many, many metres of electrical wire making up the windings. If there is no difference, then the power factor is 1. But the motor is an inductive device, and there will be a difference, making the power factor less than 1, less than perfectly efficient. Real power is the actual power that you get out, what the motor converts into mechanical work, in this case turning a shaft. Apparent power is what you are paying for, the total power supplied to the motor, including all those reactive losses because of the inductance of the windings, the friction and so on. Real power divided by apparent power will always be less than 1. A power factor of 1 is the designer's dream, since all the supplied power is used for work in turning the shaft and none is lost on reactive power. And there are consequences for a low power factor. There will be increased current as the motor requires more current to produce the same work, which can overload cables, cause heat generation and energy wastage, and possible financial penalties from supply companies for having a low cos phi that may destabilise or unbalance the supply. Some motor nameplates will show 50 Hz and 60 Hz operation. The letter U is the international symbol for voltage, and shown here are the supply voltage ranges for delta and star operation. If the motor is connected in delta mode, then the voltage range should be between 220 volts and 240 volts, and we always specify 230 volts nominal in the UK. For star or Y mode, the supply voltage should be between 380 and 415 volts with a nominal of 400 volts. You should be able to recognise star and delta connections from the motor terminal block. The wrong connection with the wrong voltage can damage the motor windings. We also need to know the current drawn by the motor and the power of the motor. Shown here, this three phase motor will draw 52 amps on each phase in delta mode, its power rating. The work it can do is 30 kilowatts, which equates to 40 horsepower. Many motors, especially older ones, will show horsepower, so it's good to know how to convert between them. One horsepower is 0 0.7457 kilowatts, which we can approximate to 0 0.75 kilowatts. Kilowatts divided by 0 0.75 will give horsepower. So 30 kilowatts divided by 0 0.75 is 40 horsepower. And horsepower multiplied by 0 0.75 will approximate to kilowatts. So 40 horsepower multiplied by 0 0.75 is 30 kilowatts. Easy equations to remember. There is a thing called a service factor. What is it? SF, or service factor, tells us by how much the motor can be overloaded for short, infrequent durations without causing damage to the motor. In this example, a service factor of 1.15 will allow a short overload of 1.15 times 30 kilowatts, which is 34.5 kilowatts. But we should also consider the effects of the overload on other components, such as cables. Just because the motor has a service factor above 1 does not mean that it should always be overloaded. This motor is shown as designed for continuous operation at full load. The number S1 
indicates this. There is a scale of numbers, S2, S3, etc., indicating different non-continuous work periods. CL is the insulation class and gives an indication of the thermal tolerance of the motor windings. The windings of overloaded motors will soon reach critical temperatures, beyond which permanent damage may occur with the need for a motor rewind or motor replacement being the result. A CL factor of F, as shown here, indicates a thermal tolerance of 155 degrees Celsius. The environment in which the motor is installed matters as well, and this will be shown on the nameplate. Ambient temperature is the maximum for the surrounding environment within which the motor can safely operate. The motor needs to lose heat and higher ambient temperatures affect performance. As shown here, an ingress protection rating of IP55 is dust and water jet proof. And for more information on IP codes, see the Wiring Regulations Book, 18th edition, Amendment 2, Appendix 5, and specifically pages 497 and 498. Motors will have a maximum altitude listed. This is the maximum altitude above sea level at which the motor can safely operate without the need for derating. Higher altitudes have thinner air, and this means less air particles available to take heat away and cool the motor. Reading and understanding the information on motor nameplates is crucial to safety, performance and reliability. Some motors are designed for just one voltage, others for a variety of voltages with numerous winding interconnections possible, and this information will often be displayed on the nameplate, but how do we interpret it? Faced with images like the ones shown below, how should this type of motor be connected? And in another Learn Electrics video, we will look at and simplify the many interconnections for these types of motors. Thank you for watching. I hope that you found this video useful and informative. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer or smart device. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.